welcome to my latest edition where I'll be taking this matchbox Willis Cooper from Scruffy to hopefully looking better it's going to be a custom so it should be nice a lot of things on the casting I'm not keen on I've looked at the real car that the casting was taken off and it is raised at the front as it is on the matchbox and jacked up at the rear but this one isn't going to be like that I decided to drop the front end down and here we are drilling out the bit and drilling out to the side I'm just getting ready to pull the bit off and that side's unclipped now for the front end and coming in with the drill and here we go drilling away and only down it so far down once you see a little bit of plastic come off it can be backed off the trigger and you're ready to pull it off really or maybe before that and you can still get it off anyway here I'm drilling out the post, ready for tapping, just drilling down, and find that smooth drilling bit, got a new drill bit in, as I've managed to wear the other one out, and put in a bit of oil in, and here I come in with the tap, and tapping down the M2 tap to make a thread for the screw and here I am, I've speeded the process up well this is the caustic bath here we go with some caustic and some more a bit more and a nice fizz away and it strips the paint in no time and here the paint's actually let go by this point and you can give it a quick scrape with something although it will scrub off when it comes out most of it what is left on can be taken off with a wire wheel on your dremel here it had little bits of paint still left in the grooves after a scrub with a paintbrush in the sink so as I say the wire wheel wheel wire wool wheel Woo. it's a tongue twister is on the dremel just to get the final lap little bits where it hasn't come off and I didn't realise it when I actually did it but the casting was actually dented on the boot lid as you'll see in there you can probably see it just there in shock later after where I'm just cleaning round all the casting getting all the loose paints off there we are after I've done it still little bits here and there but it won't show that bad under paint here I think I've got most of them off if you look and here I'm putting some filler in the dents in the boot there it is, one's dry use sandpaper on it and sand it down start with I end up on 1200s but I start with a bit coarser grain probably about I think the word numbering system goes 800 so it might be 800s then up to 12 I think the bigger the number the finer the grain it is without looking proper Anyway, here I am with the paint and spraying it onto this trusty Heinkel bomber test grid for testing my paint strength and stuff. And here we go, starting to spray the casting, doing a few light tack coats. I'm actually using Tamiya gloss black and Tamiya thinner. 
which I could do it with topping both of them up really. Go out and get some more tammy paints and dinners in New Year's. But I want, I also want some cellulose dinners because there's some I want to spray so. I've got some projects coming up that I'll be doing in cellulose And here we are, I've done a clay coat of lacquer and it has some black metal flake in it and it shines up multi colours as you can see there it probably shows up better there than it does in the later video although it's not quite as harsh as what I wanted I think I'll have to get a different type of flake because the one I wanted are the rainbow colours through red blues greens and that this does it but it's very subtle it does it well in this light as you can see the colors reflecting it might even be the light that makes it shine different i think daylight actually works better than artificial light on it probably because daylight has all the spectrum in here the actual white wire supplied with the wheels wasn't wide enough for the front wheels so I've drilled the wheels a bit bigger because the wire I used was a bit thicker so I've drilled it out to take a uh, drilled the wheels out to take the thicker bar which later on it does work, works quite well and looks quite good as you'll see later on it's quite a nice looking rod when it's finished <laughs> the wheels are more modern than I would have liked I'd like if somebody did some wolf race slots some period alloys but I'm using the modern ones happy enough but I'd love some of the old style alloys they used to use in the late 70s early 80s as I say most used to use wolf race slots back in the 80s but they looked a very neat wheel Anyway, just chest in the inside, what I'm doing here because I'm going to be lower in the front I'm cutting out where the wheels go in just cutting a bigger channel into it and it worked quite well, it brought the wheels nicer up into the arches as you'll see later on also though, because I dropped that I'll sh I think I'll show it later on I also had to cut into the chassis and put a piece in to strengthen it because once the actual wheels were right dropped down the body were dropped onto the wheels here we are, there's starts a bit the base on the chassis would have rubbed on the floor so I'm taking it down and there we are it's new stance looks quite a bit better I've not really touched the I've not really touched the what do you call it, rear wheels and here I am painting the interior the insides getting a it's had a coat of black and it's having a coat of white on the seats now and here I am coating the rocker covers in a red doing it a little bit detailed making the engine look quite a bit nicer leaving the silver in the middle there for the badge 
whatever that may be. Um, getting up to the edge of the engine. Making it look a lot tidier. And there we are, both sides done. Looking quite good in its form there. And there's a the body again. I made a little bit of a mistake. I'm, I'm thinking of switching from Tamiya. I've never been a big fan of Tamiya gloss coat. So I'm thinking of swapping back over to that polyurethane I was using. It were a far nicer coat, unfortunately though, I can't uh, brush that if I'm using flake. I can't use it with a flake, so I may have to work out a way, say, use cellulose clear or use enamel clear or even Tamiya clear, and then put the polyurethane over the top of it. But I want to bake it on, and when I baked this, it made it slightly orange peely. It's livable with, and it looks a lot nicer than it was. But, could do a lot nicer. And here I'm using one of Rob's favourites, the Null Noil. And it's been used to bring up the detailing on the engine. Give it a bit of depth and show off the detail. As you can see it drops into the recessed areas. And takes all the brightness off it. And here I'm using... A wash called Seraphin Sepia from Games Workshop in the same range as the Null Nile just to make the parachute pack look a bit more three dimensional. And here we have me screwing back together the base after. doing some hutching and thrutching to make it fit. Putting it back together. And there we have it back together. And pop 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 and there we go. More or less finished article ready to go on the turntable and here we have the basic finished article the paint finish could be a lot nicer I think my main cock up was putting it in the oven to bake dry and the heat slightly rippled it you can't actually see the flake as well on this one as you can on the earlier version but you can see the actual flakes, but you can't see them reflect the colour like I'd like them to. But even so, it may, does make it look something a little different to the black. And makes the rod stand out a wee bit. The wheels make it look quite a bit different. And I must have messed about with focus there and not noticed. But anyway, I digress. There we are. Back to normal. I think I left the focus alone at this point. And there we are. Get a decent side shot of it. Anyway, at this point, I think it's a good point to say thank you very much for watching. If you will subscribe and even better if you ring the bell so you can get notifications that would be much appreciated. Thank you and ta for now.